Odyssey recently released a public beta to their Odyssey applications that drive the Odyssey Maxwell. And this public beta brings head tracking to the Dolby Atmos renderer. So you now can use the Odyssey Maxwell directly with the Dolby Atmos renderer and you can take advantage of the new head tracking capabilities that the Dolby Atmos renderer offers. Now the Maxwell are a very highly regarded gaming headset, but are they any good for Dolby Atmos production? Well, I have my thoughts and uh, I have the feeling that I need to make the most uncomfortable recommendations that I've ever made. Let me explain. First of all, I need to point out that I'm not going to do a detailed review of the Odyssey Maxwell. There are more qualified people than I who reviewed them in the past, and I'm going to leave a couple of links in the description below. If you're interested in how they sound in the ears of somebody who has experience with headphones and is an audiophile, please check out those reviews. They're really, really great. What I want to do is I want to really focus on the Dolby Atmos capabilities, in particular the head tracking capabilities. But I'm nevertheless going to add my personal opinion about these headphones because I do have an opinion, and my opinion actually actually differs substantially from some of the other reviewers. So I felt it might make sense to kind of add my completely subjective view of those headphones. I'm going to talk about the good, the bad and the ugly and let me start with the ugly and this is really very, very personal. I do own a number of headphones, about 2000 or so, in the approximate quality range of the Odyssey Maxwell. And these are the first headphones that are too small for me. Um, I know that I have a big head, but I never knew that my head was that big. Uh, essentially, if I put them on, it feels like somebody is constantly pulling on my headphones. They are uh, really too small. I have them on the highest setting. And before anybody gets too excited, yes, I changed the headband in order to get to the highest setting, to the largest setting. And this is still too small for me. Now, I do use a custom headband uh, from Wicked Cushion, I think that's the name of the company. And this is a little bit different to the regular headband. The regular headband is kind of this leathery thing, uh, and that is very stiff and uh, very uncomfortable for me. So this is not really something that I could use. So what I decided to do is instead use a aftermarket custom headband, which is made out of silicon and it's a little bit more flexible and therefore a little bit more comfortable. Now, people have pointed out that these aftermarket headbands are a little smaller, but that's actually not really the case. They are about the same size. And because they're a little bit more flexible, it is a little easier on uh, kind of the size of my head. Uh, so essentially kind of, I think they probably kind of conform to my head shape a little better. And therefore it is just enough to make them not completely uncomfortable. Now for me, the best way to wear these headphones would probably be without a headband altogether. And uh, if you watch some of the reviews, you will actually see that these headphones have an additional padding underneath the um, metal headband here. And you would think that that actually helps, but it really it doesn't because that uh, additional padding is really only for show. What this does is it hides a cable that runs from one ear cup to the other. So if you are not using the um, uh, kind of headband here, this flexible headband here, um, what you really have is you have a headphone that rests, uh, that has essentially a cable resting directly on your head and it becomes completely uncomfortable. So while uh, the size would be okay if I use them without this, uh, silicone headband, um, it, it becomes completely unbearable because it, it's just it's just super uncomfortable kind of using it that way. So I'm a little bit stuck with the, the way they are right now. And that brings me to the second problem that I have with those headphones, and that is that the ear pads are really, really thin. And the consequence of that is that your ears are actually resting on the drivers, which is a bit unfortunate. Now, if your head is not as large as mine, there are actually solutions for that. And those are custom ear pads that you can purchase. So here, for example, I have the Wicked Cushion ear pads, and I'm going to leave links in the description below uh, for you where you can actually get them. Now these are uh, add additional space uh, and make sure that your ears are away from the driver and make them, or should at least make them feel more comfortable. However, if you have a head as large as mine, they don't really work because uh, these larger ear pads increase the pulling motion or the pulling feeling that I have when I put this earfo uh, these earphones on. So for me personally, the best solution or the best combination was the Wicked Cushion headband that adds a little bit more space above my head because of the flexibility and the stock ear pads. Now, ironically, the fact that these ear pads make me feel like my entire ear is touching the driver helps me in mitigating the 
pulling feeling that I'm getting because now it's not only the lower part of my ears that is sort of touching the uh, headphones, it's my entire ear and that makes me forget the fact that these are actually too small. And uh, so this actually helps. So for me personally, uh, this works. Um, is it comfortable? No. These are probably the most uncomfortable headphones that I own. These are the only ones where I have these problems. Everything else that I have is working perfectly fine with my big head, but this uh, unfortunately don't. I can work. I can wear them for about half an hour. After half an hour, because I constantly feel the need to to pull them down. After about half an hour, my head really starts to hurt, and I have to take them off. So um, while they have very very good functionality. Uh, they are really uncomfortable, which once again is really, really, really unfortunate because those are actually really good headphones. Now with the bad and the ugly out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the good and the good is the sound quality. These are actually really nice headphones. Uh, these are Odyssey he headphones, so uh, obviously they have a really good sound quality. Now, um, I don't think they are as good as many people claim. Uh, I'm personally, I'm lacking a little bit of uh, travel. So in the mid travel region, they're a little bit recessed, um, which makes them really good for casual listening. So they are really, really nice to use for just a regular music listening experience. Uh, and I'm assuming they're also really, really good for gaming, uh, which I wouldn't know because I can't really wear them for more than half an hour. Um, but uh, for studio production, I'm not completely sure. They lack a little bit of detail. Um, if you have those headphones, I would really love to hear from you. If you can actually use them for music production, I would really like to know that um, because I think that might actually be an issue. Um, they don't have as much detail. At least I feel that they don't have as much detail as I would normally like to have in a studio headphone. But otherwise, they're actually really, really good. So with all that being said, let's talk a little bit about why I still think these are actually excellent headphones for somebody who is working in Dolby Atmos, and that is the head tracking capabilities that uh, Odyssey brought to the Maxwell, in particular in connection with the Dolby Atmos renderer. Now, the way this works is that uh, this is currently available in a beta version, so you have to sign up for the beta access, uh, which is essentially a purchasing uh, process where you purchase the beta access for zero dollars, which is kind of weird, but they send you the link to the uh, beta version of the Odyssey HQ application that allows you to access head tracking, and you also get a dynamic link library that you have to drop into the head tracking folder of the Dolby Atmos renderer installation. They do include instructions on how to do that. It's very straightforward to do. And once you've done that, um, essentially the Odyssey Maxwell become available as uh, a head tracking uh, device in the Dolby Atmos renderer. Now be aware that in order for that to work, you need to have the latest firmware version on your headphones. And uh, if you update the firmware, you might want to do that before updating the Odyssey HQ application. I ran into issues where the beta version of the Odyssey HQ application would not update the firmware of the headphone, so I actually had to go back and reinstall the previous version of uh, Odyssey HQ in order to update the firmware, and then essentially everything worked fine. Um, but uh, be aware that you need to have the latest firmware version. There might also be the question, do you need the Xbox version or the PS5 version of those headphones? Because the Xbox version specifically lists Dolby Atmos as something that it is capable with. But you actually, in order to access the uh, Dolby Atmos head tracking capabilities of the Maxwell, from within the Dolby Atmos renderer, you don't really need the Xbox version. The PS5 version works just fine. These are actually the PS5 version. And in case you're wondering what's the difference, the difference is really just the dongle. Um, they have uh, different dongles because the PS5 and the Xbox have different uh, requirements in terms of hardware that you connect to the gaming platforms. So if you have the PS5 version, you cannot use the PS5 dongle with an Xbox and vice versa. But the headphones are pretty identical. So let's see how the head tracking works. And uh, for that, we need to connect the Maxwell to our computer via USB. Unfortunately, uh, head tracking does not work over Bluetooth. Even with the dongle, it doesn't really work. Now, if you're using the dongle, um, the computer will actually receive some head tracking information. It's just not really useful. I'm not completely sure what's going on there. Uh, it does not uh, provide 
the correct head tracking information. It might be that sometime in the future they're going to fix that and uh, head tracking might become available over the dongle. However, at the moment, uh, this is only available over USB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the USB cable to my computer. And uh, once I've done that, the uh, Maxwell will essentially show up. And uh, I now see my head in the Maxwell AQ HQ app. Let me just recenter that. And as you can see, this is actually really responsive and works uh, really, really well and uh, is very, very flexible. Now, when, when you connect them for the first time, they ask you to do a calibration step. And that calibration step makes sure that the tracking device that's in those headphones is calibrated correctly. Uh, that takes about 20 minutes uh, and uh, then everything should be fine. Since I'm already in the Odyssey HQ app, let me also quickly show some of the settings here. And the one thing that might be of particular interest are the EQ settings. Now, um, I personally find that the um, stock settings, the default settings, the Odyssey settings are not really to my liking. I like a little bit more of uh, uh, travel. And for that, uh, I, or at least for me personally, the one settings that worked best was the immersive setting that kind of increases the travel just a little. It also increases the base a little, but that's fine. But uh, you kind of, you have different options. Just choose the one that uh, that works for you. And uh, I should also mention that because those are planar magnetic drivers in those headphones, you can actually uh, EQ quite aggressively. These are actually known to be very, very uh, good with uh, all kinds of EQ that you're doing. So you, in any any problem that you have in terms of the sound signature of those headphones, you should be able to kind of fix with an EQ. And with that being said, let's have a look on how everything works with the Dolby Atmos renderer. Now, I used a very simple Dolby Atmos project here, and I'm using Ableton for that purpose today. I'm not going to go over the details on how to set everything up, but essentially what we have here is we have one audio track that holds an audio loop, and we have one track that holds the LTC timecode plugin. And then in live, essentially, I have set the output to be the Dolby Audio Bridge. The uh, output is set to 129 on the LTC plugin track and to 11 and 12 on the audio track that is uh, serving as an audio object. And then on the audio track, I have the Dolby Atmos Music Panner and the Dolby Atmos Music Panner is set to object pair 11 and 12. And that is pretty much it. And on the Dolby Atmos renderer side, I set the inputs uh, to the uh, Dolby Audio Bridge and then the outputs to the Maxwell. Now, I'm as uh, if you've watched my videos in the past, you know that I am using loopback as a method to simultaneously record the audio that goes into my headphones and uh, also uh, so that you can actually hear what I'm hearing. Now, in your particular case, you would just kind of select the Maxwell here as the output device. But in my case, I'm using this loopback device. And uh, that is pretty much it. Uh, now, in terms of the settings in the Dolby Atmos renderer for head tracking to work, you need to set the headphone render mode to binaural, you need to enable head tracking, and you need to set everything to headphone only mode. And once you've done that, you can see in the head tracking drop down here, uh, if you dropped the dynamic link library into the correct place, uh, in addition to the OSC head tracker, which comes standard with the Dolby Atmos renderer, the second option, the Maxwell HT version, in my case 0.2.2, Three, which is the beta version, and that essentially uh, enables head tracking on the Dolby Atmos renderer. And uh, as soon as I do that, I should actually, and this might be a little bit difficult to see because this head is a little small. Let me just kind of make that larger here. You essentially see that the head in the Dolby Atmos renderer moves with my head position, and that essentially now gives me a banal rendering of the audio in the Dolby Atmos renderer with the Maxwell directly. There's no additional software needed. Everything just works with, from within the renderer. If you ever need to uh, recenter the, um, the, the the Maxwell because the tracking uh, drifted off a little, you do that with the center button here that is uh, in the Dolby Atmos renderer and that will essentially recenter your head and uh, make sure that everything works fine. Unfortunately, you cannot have the renderer and the Odyssey HQ up open at the same time. That would probably confuse the system. Either one of them need, can be open, but not both of them. So if you have the Dolby Atmos renderer open, you cannot recenter the headphones with the Odyssey HQ up. You need to recenter them from within the Dolby Atmos renderer. Okie dokie, so let's just have a brief listen to what we have here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply play that, uh, that little loop. And as you can sort of uh, hear, if I'm moving my head to the 
left, you essentially hear that as a panning. Now, in order to make that a little bit more obvious, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply bring them together here. And that essentially makes sure that the sound is now directly in front of me. So if I'm now moving my head to the left, you essentially have that panning very visible or very audible. And that actually works extremely well. So as a head tracking device in the Dolby Atmos renderer, this works fine. Now they do drift a little. If you are familiar with uh, head tracking in, uh, in any capacity, you know that most of the head trackers, and let me just turn that off for a second, that any head tracker has some sort of drift. The uh, Odyssey Maxwell drift a little bit, but they don't drift as much as many of the other head trackers. So you might need to want every once in a while just kind of push this little uh, center button here that recenters the head tracking and then everything should work fine again. So as you see, this works actually really, really well. So if you're working with the external Dolby Atmos renderer and you're interested in head tracking, the Odyssey Maxwell are a really, really good option provided that they fit you, um, which in my case they don't, which is once again really, really unfortunate because these would probably be my favorite headphones if they would be a little bit more comfortable. Um, but uh, it is what it is. What can you do? Uh, but uh, if you have a head that is not as large as mine, this might actually be a really, really good uh, kind of head, pair of headphones to use. Um, and uh, so I can actually recommend them unless, once again, they are uncomfortable for you. Now, there's one final comment that I would like to make because I already know that some of you are already wondering, can you use head tracking of the Odyssey Maxwell in anything else but the Adobe Atmos Renderer? And the answer to that is currently no. I hope that at some point Odyssey will uh, create like a little plugin that you can use. So in order to make head tracking available to other solutions as well, and not only the Dolby Atmos renderer, but for the moment being the Dolby Atmos renderer is the only application that allows you to use head tracking with the, with the Odyssey Maxwell. Now this is a little bit unfortunate, but technically this shouldn't be too difficult to do. So if anybody from Odyssey is listening on the off chance that they're actually listening, uh, this would actually be really nice to have a little application that, for example, takes in the head tracking information from the Odyssey Maxwell and passes them on as OSC messages so that we can use them in any application that takes head tracking over OSC. Now this is really everything I wanted to say today. Thanks again for watching my videos. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.